Well, Karen, first of all, welcome. Thank you. Welcome to Los Cerritos Community News. And uh, we're here just to basically uh, find out a little bit more about yourself okay. and your campaign okay. and uh, what you've done on the school board in the past. Okay. So first, uh, tell us a little bit more about yourself and your background. Well, I moved to La Mirada when I was seven. So I am a product of the Norwalk La Mirada Unified School District. And then when I married, we bought a house in La Mirada and we raised our children. So I was involved in PTA for 20 years and um, was PTA president, council PTA president, very involved in what was going on at the district, being on some committees um, on the Measure S bond that we passed for uh, school um, modernization. When was that? Eight years ago now. Eight years ago, okay. Yeah, something like that, eight or nine, something like that. And um, so I was appointed to the board in 2004. Okay. Ran an, uh, now you got appointed to the board. Whose seat did you take? I was uh, Leonard Shryock. Okay. Had left. Had left. Okay. I was appointed. All right. Two thousand five. I ran a two-year term uncontested race, and in two thousand seven, I was reelected for four years. Okay. So this is your third so term. I've been in seven years. Now. Seven term. Mm -hmm. Okay. Seven. Seven years. years. Okay. And uh, talk about what you do at nine to five. Nine to five, I work part-time okay. for Unified Grocers. I've worked there for um, 38 years now. Wow. Unified Grocers? Yes. Great. Yes. Counts payable and been there ever since I was in diapers back. Unified Grocers, that's union. Union? The uh, the office workers are not, yes. The okay. warehousemen, truck drivers are all union employees. Okay, good. Um, I have served as the vice president of the board and president of the board. I've been married 37 years. What's your name, your husband? Alan James yeah. Morrison. Alan James Morrison. And you live in La Mirada? Yes, we do. Beautiful, beautiful. Since 75. What does your husband do for a living? He retired from Auto Club. Nice. Very good. Eight years with Always him. comes in handy. Yeah. <laughs> Saved my I, life a couple times. I knew who to call when I broke down. Yeah. That or Luigi Verona. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Good friend. <laughs> exactly. All right, well, tell us a little bit more about what the uh, important issues are facing in our Flamer School District. Important, for the next. important issues yeah. is number one, uh, academic achievement for all students. Okay. Making sure we're closing that achievement gap. Uh, we're working very hard on that right now and doing a good job of it. Also, our fiscal solvency. Um, remaining fiscally solvent in these horrible economic times and we're trying to increase our enrollment um, through opening some magnet schools now. We've got seven new magnet schools opening up tomorrow, and this draws in folks that maybe we have lost to other districts or mm -hmm. whatever. So people are looking at that now. People are looking. It's a competitive market, so to speak, in the public yeah. school age you know, now. So we are reaching out to those that are looking for uh, the magnet school and something that is something more than offered in just your... But what kind of magnet programs are you offering? offering this well, year? we're offering some technology and uh, science, uh, visual and performing arts in several of the schools. We've got um, filmmaking in one of our middle schools, so it's... Across the board. Across the board, yeah. yep, seven different... Uh, six, six middle schools and a high school. That's great. Yeah, I'm very proud of what they've been doing. Do you have, uh, is it, do you think that, that the district will have to close any more schools? It will, it, it hasn't been looked up at as of yet. Yeah. We will, we will study, the pro we will study the issue. It would have to be really a fiscal uh, savings to us. You know, a lot of times when you close a school, it opens other issues, as in transportation, um, and sometimes it, it isn't worth closing a school because it doesn't save us enough money to, to do it. So. How much does a, an average uh, saving if you close a school? Well, and that depends. Uh, it's salaries of administrators, secretary, because you don't lose teachers. They yeah. just go somewhere else um, building. So it's, uh, 
probably 800,000. Per campus? I would think. It depends on how many students are there. Mm -hmm. So that would be the that would be the good thing. But again, you yeah. bring in the what it would cost us to transport students and all that, then sometimes it doesn't work out to save. That would still be a, a drop in the bucket, wouldn't it? A drop in the bucket as far as savings? Yeah, as, as far as uh, revenue, be a one-time only. Right. Yeah. No, it would, yeah, it would be a one-time. Well, no, not really, because year after year you're paying an administrator and You still have so to on. maintain the uh, property. Yeah, we, you know, and we look at, you know, what we're doing with some now, okay. we're leasing some out and yeah. so on and so forth, so. Okay. So if, if does, if, so if you're one of your opponents says that it's inevitable that we're going to close X, Y, and Z schools, how do you it's, respond to that? I don't say it's inevitable because, okay. number one, it's a, a board decision once the issue comes up and a lot of um, studying needs to go into it. We would take it out to the public. We did make a mistake the last time we closed a school and it, it didn't involve the community. This time it would involve the community, so I can't go out on a limb and say it's inevitable because it's yeah. it's really not. It depends on what our what our um, enrollment is, and then after a lot of uh, looking at books and seeing what other costs it would it would cost, then we would. I would imagine it would also uh, pertain to what the state does mm -hmm. on the budget uh, come January. Right, the mid-year. Yeah that we might get into, yes. What do you think about the state of public education in California? I think the state of public education is, I think fiscally, it, we're just being, we're just being undermined and cut and cut. We're being crucified. Now, we're being crucified, <laughs> but really in the, in the long run and what we're doing with so little is amazing. We are, I know that, you know, my kids graduated 10 years ago from the district, and I know kids are learning more than my kids have been ever did. With this changing technology world and, and the diversity, we are just doing amazing things with less money, unfortunately, and it's really, really tearing down a lot of well, people. The, the kids today, what they learn in kindergarten we learned in first and second grade. You're absolutely right. They're reading, mm -hmm. writing. It's just amazing. Do you think it'll ever come to the point where you just they'll just do it with school books and just give each kid a ThinkPad? I would. I would think. That's pretty that fast down I, the road. I think it might be possible. Yeah. Would that be it, something you'd be willing to look into next? You know, coming on board if you get reelected. Kind of changing. Yeah, looking, yeah, looking at uh, maybe really rethinking the way. Are your kids are taught up there as far Already, as technology? Already, technology, that's amazing what we're doing. Mm -hmm. I think uh, financially, you again, have to look at all that. And then who's responsible for these pieces of technology that the students are using? Yeah. Uh, you know, the other day at the Cerritos Chamber, uh, Congressman uh, Sanchez said, uh, kind of hinted at that, she said, the states need more latitude uh, to uh, work the, the uh, programs that come down from Washington, mm -hmm. the same as the local districts, need time to work what comes down from the state. You, you can't just say this is what it will be, right. because each district is different and each school is different. Absolutely. Yeah, so the technology piece yeah. is, I mean, I know it's coming. And I know pretty soon that school books could be replaced with a uh, iPad or whatever. But then it comes down to who purchases that, and who maintains got, it, and who may, Yeah, you've got a lot of issues when you start thinking about that. But so and there's also the question of does an iPad replace a book, and how does this affect the? Uh, individual student, does he learn to read or just what's on the iPad? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it would be interesting because if we did go to some sort or of Or the Kindles or piece, things like that, maybe, yeah. maybe it would be a mixture. What? Who owns it? Yeah. Yeah. So does a kid leave third grade and leave his 
kindle to the next piece guy. Of, yeah. <laughs> piece of uh, whatever he's using behind, or is it going with so, him, you know? That's a whole new world. It it's a whole a new, new world. world, it is, isn't it? It is a new world. It's, kind of, it's exciting. I know. Yeah. But it keeps it changes so fast, I you know, you can't keep up with it anymore. We I had uh, done a story last week, a front page story two weeks ago actually, in regards to uh, uh, a proposal that is being brought up within the Norwalk Lamar School District in regards to giving out two possible types yes. of uh, diplomas, yes. one being a uh, basic diploma and the other one being a diploma of merit. Correct. What is your, what's your initial feelings about that? I need, and we're going to talk about it more because my initial feeling is I am real strong on asking for, not, not settling for anything less than what I would consider 2.0 average. I think that a ch I think a student should be able to reach a 2.0 average. Whether they graduate. they plan to go on to college or more into vocational work. Uh, I, I had I just have to ask some more questions about it before we make a decision. Excuse Number me. one. Uh, me. Do you think it sort of um, uh, rewards failure? Well, and that's what I want. Or to mediocrity. Check. That's what I want. That's that's my fear. Yeah. But I really don't think that's what it does because of the um, number of students they said didn't really have a 2.0 or above. Yeah, that anyway. was interesting when I found out that they said that this is only going to affect less than 20 students Correct. or something. And I thought, that doesn't seem right. And again, they, they talked about other districts that yeah. do, do the same thing. Yeah. And I want to hear more about that and how many students they had below the 2.0. So this yeah. would be something that if you get reelected, it's going to be something you have to deal with. Correct. For that particular issue. Correct. And I like I loved everything else about it. I just need to ask a few more questions about that. Are kids going to? Oh, I can graduate with less than 2.0. So. Okay, I do can I skate need to any really easier, bother? harder. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And that would be my only concern with it. Uh, what about? Uh, uh, some of the other big issues that are facing the school board right now. What are, what are some things that you think are really pressing? That that uh, if you have if you get reelected, what are you going to have to? What's what's going to be down the road that you're going to have to deal with? Declining enrollment. I think our main thing is I budget. hope we can bring some declining enrollment. I think we can. I hope we can turn that around. Mm -hmm. We're working real hard at doing that with um, news newsletters going out to every student in the school that goes home. Um, and then opening these magnet schools. So I hope we're going to increase enrollment. I think our budget's going to be our biggest challenge. I don't want to take programs away from schools. I, I, I am absolutely against taking away from the visual and performing arts, and that's just growing in our district, which is a real plus. And uh, it's just it's going to be a tough time. It's going to be real tough to, to uh, deal with the budget. A lot of people in the past have said that Norwalk and La Mirada are in two different worlds, and, but they have the same school district. I don't agree with you that. You don't agree with that? No. Okay. Why? They're all students of equality as far as I'm concerned. Okay. I think that uh, La Mirada would have a real tough time operating on their own. It would be a very small school district. We get a lot of benefits from being a larger school district. We're, we're more able to... Um, to delve out the monies because we have more of a district to do it in. Uh, we do have a lot of Title I schools in Norwalk. Mm -hmm. They do get extra funds. That allows us to uh, supplement La Mirada in some ways with funds from other areas. And the Title I uh, schools are what again? Title I schools are for the kids in the um, that are at lower socioeconomic. Okay, got it. So they, they tend to get more funds because of the English language learning. And stuff. Do you think that some of these, uh, this area that we live in, it has a lot of very small school districts like Little Lake and Los right. Nietos, um, some of those, do you think those should be dissolved and put into another bigger district? Or, or do you, would you favor looking into that possibility? You know, I, I think if they operate, you know, it's not really my business probably to get involved in what they do. Mm -hmm. They seem to be operating okay, and that would be a decision I think they would have to make. Okay. Um, you know, as far you know, sometimes like, less is not is is sometimes better than more, or, or more is more is well, whatever. Well, they're fun. Yeah. You know, it depends on if they're a un, we're a unified school district. Some mm -hmm. are just a city school district, or yeah. High school, or, yeah. and those those are funded a little differently than we are. So, tell us more about your campaign. 
going to work very hard. I will be mainly going door to door is my, is my uh, venture. That's what I did last time. My husband and I went door to door and personally greeted individuals. And who's endorsing you? I don't know yet. So you don't know yet? Okay. I don't know if the start. teacher's union is. Uh, okay. um, I have some Tony Mendoza, and you know, I'm, I'm contacting um, Leonard Shryock is from Norwalk, just now beginning to contact people. Okay. I thought it would be, I don't usually ask people to endorse until we know who the whole playing field is. Yeah. Because I don't think it's fair to ask somebody if they don't know the rest of the candidates. Four, three candidates for four seats, pretty good odds. <laughs> How many incumbents no, are running? No, four candidates. Four candidates. Four candidates for three seats. Four candidates for three seats. That's if, right. If you better odds. Three incumbents? And I'm the only incumbent. Yeah. Oh, really? Two yeah. open seats. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I'm the only incumbent. So, I'm never comfortable, though. I, I do not go into this being comf 